buy health insurance if they were just allowed to go out of state and buy their health insurance somewhere other than right here in the Garden State. Um, 700,000 people's lives, <laughs> 700,000 lives covered by health insurance without the anxiety, you know, all the anxiety that comes with being uninsured, uh, all the pressures, all the health benefits of being able to go to a doctor regularly and prevent uh, uh, problems before you have to show up in the emergency room to get them treated. Uh, 700,000 people could be benefited without spending a taxpayer dime. This doesn't, you don't have to spend any money to change the regulations in New Jersey to allow people to go outside or allow out-of-state insurance companies to come in and sell to our citizens. Um, the, uh, the persuasiveness of this number uh, floored me. I mean, the, the, the size of that number floored me. I've been uh, pushing this um, with my colleagues. I'm promoting it uh, everywhere I go. And uh, if you can't do this simple <laughs> regulatory change that would have such a profound effect on so many lives, I don't know what we're doing down there in Trenton. We talk about uh, the Soviets. You, you, people sometimes see the, the social, Soviet Socialist Republic of New Jersey. You know, <laughs> some people feel that way, but think about what they're doing. Think about what the regulations currently do. They block, they trap New Jerseyans in state to purchase health insurance. Uh, Ronald Reagan went to the Brandenburg Gate a little over 20 years ago, and he told Mr. Gorbachev to tear down that wall because they had to put a, the communists had to put up a wall to keep people behind the Iron Curtain because they knew that there were better lives on the other side of the wall. But that's what we've done in New Jersey. We've created a, a legal restriction, a legal wall, and we're keeping people from uh, health insurance policies that could benefit them and their families. Um, two events since the summer. I think have made the case better for healthcare choice uh, than even this um, study has, or even the common sense uh, of the proposal uh, does. You might not have been following. You might not be following the controversy because it's affecting people in South Jersey more than North Jersey. But Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield is, is in a big dispute with the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia over their contract. The contract is up and CHOP and Horizon can't agree on reimbursement rates. And as a result, they're ready, CHOP and Horizon are ready to go their separate ways. The problem is that CHOP is arguably, is certainly the, the greatest uh, children's hospital in the region, uh, in the South Jersey, Philadelphia region, might be in the uh, mid-Atlantic states. And everyone in South Jersey who gets a sick kid and has Horizon has been able to send their kids to CHOP for the best care that they could possibly get. Well, this dispute between Horizon and CHOP uh, is going to prevent them, either going to prevent them from going to, uh, to CHOP uh, to get the best care for their kids, or they're going to have to pay out of pocket or out of network to go to CHOP. And people are up in arms. I don't know who's right and who's wrong. Horizon and CHOP are sending press releases out and telling, hey, it's their fault, it's our fault, it's their fault, it's our fault. Um, I don't know whose fault it is. All I know is that if people in South Jersey had an opportunity to buy a health insurance policy from Pennsylvania that has CHOP in its network, this wouldn't be an issue for them. Horizon and CHOP could fight it out all they wanted. If, if our citizens had the choice to go somewhere else for their insurance policies, they really wouldn't care, as long as their kids were getting the best care that they, <coughs> they could. Um, that's not happening, and I think that's going to bring uh, pressure to bear on uh, <coughs> legislators in South Jersey, especially Democrats. And I've been suggesting that to my colleagues, that this is a way out of the box for you, even the Democrats, uh, when your citizens come to you and say, do something about CHOP and Verizon. Remember, there's only, in the early 90s, we had uh, as many as two dozen, as, if, if I recall my, uh, my data, two dozen insurers on the market uh, to sell individual insurance to New Jerseyans. Remember how that individual market crashed from about 400,000 lives to about 10,000 now? Um, Today, we only have about six insurers that sell on the individual market. Verizon Blue Cross Blue Shield is the 800-pound the gorilla there. They, they insure most of those lives, but Aetna is another one that, that has a lot, and then there are a couple of others who sell um, on the market. Some, they sell and don't want any lives to insure because they you have to sell on the individual market if you want to sell to small employers, so they make their individual 
policy is so expensive nobody buys them anyway, so they don't care. Um, so if you if Horizon doesn't cover CHOP anymore, you really don't have many places to go in New Jersey other than Aetna, and I don't know what Aetna's arrangement is with CHOP and, and a couple of other companies. Um, if you had many more choices, you could uh, you know, vote with your feet and, and get policies that would help your family. Second thing is, of course, the budget crisis we're in, and uh, you know, we're facing a $1.2 billion shortfall just in this fiscal year, $5 billion next year, and you know, there are proposals floating around Trenton for a universal health care plan uh, that would require every New Jersey to buy health insurance, uh, but then set up a governmental policy that would be subsidized on the basis of your income um, and if you were presently <coughs> uninsured, you would be forced to, um, and had nothing else, nowhere else to turn, you'd be forced to buy that insurance. But think about what, what the state government is doing. They, they have regulated our policies to the point where they have made them so expensive that we can't afford them. So now they're either going to subsidize the policies that we can't afford, or they're going to go out and create a program um, subsi and, uh, and subsidize those premiums because they made the, the individual policies so expensive we couldn't afford it in the first place. So, um, What's the status of your recommendation? Sitting in committee. And I've, I've urged the uh, chairman to uh, have a hearing and, uh, and bring it forward. Okay. And okay. Who's the chairman? Who's the chairman? Who's the chairman? Gary Scher. Uh, he's the chairman of the... the state. State. Right. Right. Um, chairman of the uh, financial and uh, banking <coughs> institutions. Uh, financial institutions. <coughs> Did you try to get a bipartisan uh, support to your bill, like co-sponsors? Absolutely. Uh, and unfortunately, we only have Republican co-sponsors now. Uh, but I have approached Democrats, especially in South Jersey. I asked uh, some of the chair to have a hearing on the bill, and uh, so far, no movement. Um, Why? A couple, couple reasons. Let me, let me tell you who else is supporting the bill, and I'll talk a little bit about the opposition. and it. it kind of uh, is related to what I just mentioned. The bill is being supported by a broad coalition, including the uh, uh, New Jersey Medical Society, uh, NFIB, the National Federation of Independent Business, Small Businessmen, um, Med Society, NFIB, the Restaurant Association, mostly small businessmen. Uh, I think we have a good chance of getting the hospital association's support. A company like Aetna, who has policies that they're dying to sell in New Jersey but aren't allowed to, uh, would, would love to do it. So, and, and I have been contacted. I, I published op-eds in several s newspapers in the state. Asbury Park Press, Bergen Record, Gannett. Uh, Sue Esponte, people, just on their own, have, have written me emails. I mean, they, they had this uh, op-ed in the Asbury Park Press. They, they're not my constituents. They went online, found my email address, wrote me letters, how important this was to them that it be passed. And, um, Tom's familiar with these legislative offices. You, you don't get constituent letters on specific issues that are that thoughtful that often. We get one or two on an issue. We've got two dozen. People all over the state are saying, gosh, we need this. And, and health care is, if you look at the polls, health care is consistently number one or number two in, in rank in terms of people's economic concerns. They're worried about their uh, bottom lines because they don't want to lose their health insurance. Um, and so, uh, there's a lot of support for it, but it hasn't been bipartisan yet. I'm hoping it will become bipartisan, obviously. Why wouldn't it? People, here, here's, here's, here's why. Uh, in Trenton now, we have a Democrat governor, Democrat majorities in the Assembly and the Senate. And their solution to the uninsured, uh, best I can tell, has been a universal mandate on everybody. In other words, everyone's got to buy health insurance. Every employer is going to have to provide health insurance or they're going to pay a fine, similar to what Massachusetts has done. And, and then we're going to create a government program to catch everybody else. And even those people who don't, you know, those people who we mandate uh, buy insurance now but don't have it readily available to them. Who's going to pay for that? Who's going to pay for that? Taxpayers. Or, or the people who, have, who are being mandated to pay. But here's the, here's the interesting thing, and they, they'll be very frank about it. We have 1.4 million uninsured. And we'd have uh, maybe, you know, if we had health care choice, half of them would go out and buy health insurance from a policy in another state. 